Hello everybody, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemote and this is Christopher Drake. We are a podcast that covers everything Admirals, Predators, and Florida Everblades related. Oh, yeah. This has been a long weekend. <sighs> Especially for me who had food poisoning. Not exactly fun. Yeah, that's why I was uh, gone solo last night. Because like I said, he was sick. That's a legit thing. He's been sick. I've been sick. The, it's been kicking our butt this past week. Let's let's just put it this way. Andy's sick. John, John, who is your backup, sick. Uh, I'm sick. Your wife might be sick. It, My wife was around. sick. Um, it His was wife's just... currently taking a nap right now because she's probably sick. Nope, she's just tired. She oh. donated plasma this morning. Uh, anyways, uh, let's talk about this uh, shootout, shall we? Let's talk about one thing first. First off, we forgot something last yeah. night. Dude. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry about the crappy production. Uh, yeah, this green screen. Yeah. Um. So last night we had forgot. Whoops. Let's not get that hit. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, hit something breakable. Uh. Uh, so last night, Freddie Gaudreau played in his 250th Admirals game. Thank you, Freddie. It's been fun having you. Also, uh, didn't he get his uh, 250th point at one point, too? No, he got his 150th, and we covered that the last week. Oh, that was his 150th. Okay. I knew he had some type of a career milestone thing going. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Anyways, like I was saying, uh, we went to a shootout in Rosemont. Admirals win 3-2 over the Wolves. Um, before the game, Keegan Colasar was assigned back to Chicago. After getting called up yesterday by Big. Don't know why they called him up last night. Hey, time. they Freddie Gaudreau him. Yeah, that was kind of <laughs> stupid because like, literally yesterday he went up and then he came back down. All right, well, let's jump up into this game. All right, uh, Chicago outshot us 7-3 in the first period. Uh, we outshot them 10-9 in the second. They outshot us 10-9 in the third. And then uh, in overtime, Chicago outshot us 2-1. Uh, so they basically outshot us 28-24 after the overtime period. Uh, Milwaukee was 1-4 for four in the power play. Chicago was 1-6. for six. Uh, Milwaukee had six penalties for a total of 12 minutes, and Chicago had four for a total of eight. Go. All right. Uh, scoring in the second, no scoring in the first. Scoring in the second was uh, Valentin Zikoff. He's That was his second of the year. With an assist from Keegan Colasar, his seventh, and Brendan Peary, his tenth. Your buddy, Brendan Peary. Yeah. <laughs> Go back to Rockford. Yeah. Your favorite team besides the Admirals. All right, and then Cole Snyder scored his 10th of the year with an assist from Freddie Gaudreau. And Alexander Carrier, uh, Freddie's fourth, Carrier's 20th. Yeah, Carrier's pretty good at getting the assist this year. Um, and then Freddie Gaudreau scored his fourth. So he has eight points now with an assist from Daniel Carr and Alexander Carrier. Uh, That's 20 is 21st, Daniel Carr is 13th. And Brendan Peary scored uh, on the power play for the Wolves. Uh, his 8th with an assist from Dylan Coughlin, his 9th, and Lucas Ale Alvinus, his 23rd. It's Alvinus. Alvinus. Yeah. And we finally got the correct pronunciation of it. He's a good player, so I'm trying to give So him this game went to a shootout. And the shooters were, first shooter was Nicholas Waugh, he, no goal, Anthony Richard, no goal, Brendan Perry, no goal, Rem Pitlick, no goal, Valentin Zikoff, no goal, Daniel Carr, Daniel Carr no goal, Lucas Elvinus, no goal, Frederick Gaudreau, goal. Three stars of the game were Brendan Perry with a goal and an assist, uh, Troy Groschnik with 26 saves on 28 shots. And Freddie Gaudreau with a goal, an assist, and then the shootout winner. In net for the Wolves was Garrett Sparks. Uh, he kind of sparked out at the end there uh, with uh, 21 saves on 23 shots. Attendance at the Allstate Arena was 6,820. How? 
didn't look like that many people. I don't know. We had 8,000 plus yesterday at the Panther Arena, in our arena, though it's packed. Yep. But then again, we have a smaller venue than uh, the All-State Arena. Yep. Uh, Brendan Schrader and Jordan Deckard are the referees. Linesmen are Mike Anderson and Jeff Pocha. Um, beyond that, the Admirals this year are 3 one or four oh one and one against the Wolves. So four oh one and one. Dead air, man. Dead air. Oh, I was reading. Um, yeah, yeah, when you read, you should like read out loud because when we're recording. Stuff, I was trying to read and figure out how to word it. Sorry. Oh, I was gonna say because dead. And the uh, this year and the the Admirals have not lost back to back rela- regulation games. Period. They have not lost a single reg back to back regulation games. <laughs> so that means that they're walking out no matter what they do with a point. Absolutely. And thankfully, we're not going to be doing any more of these uh, three games in three days crap. Because uh, AHL teams do that and NHL teams don't. It makes no damn sense whatsoever why it is, but yeah. It's the AHL's way of catching up to the NHL as far as schedule goes. Yeah, I guess. So, up next, we have the... Winter Classic. Yes, something me and him have been looking forward to. Even though I got a bad feeling about it, just because I know the Predators and, uh, yeah. The way they've been playing lately. Yeah, I got a bad feeling about this, but, uh. Who do you think you are, uh, Qui-Gon Jinn? Well, <laughs> I think, uh, the Predators are going to be seeing stars in Dallas. It's all right, we'll figure it out. And we'll see I'd be, hey, I'll be pleasantly surprised if the Predators pull out a victory, but I just can't see them beat Dallas. Well, let's see. Don't steal my bit if you're going to break down players. I'm actually looking at Preds players currently. All right, well, let's compare lines. You find the Predators' uh, front line. I'll find da- I got Dallas' front line. Daily face off. Oops, that didn't help him. Ah, stupid laptop. I just flat out told you the website. Oh well, it'll auto correct itself. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's one word. Yeah, I know. I've been trying to find it, and the computer kept giving me... I hit the L, and it would give me, like, the little, um... Symbols. Go to line combinations. Pretty good. Your computer's running slow as shit. Whoop, sorry about the swear word, folks. I haven't swore on camera in a while. You need to swear. I'll go our uh, where it says uh here you go stats. I know. I'm not sure how familiar with this website you are. That's why I'm like. And then I need uh, last ten. Is that what you're gonna base yours on? Uh huh. All right, all right, wise guy. Like I said, sorry about that swear word, folks. All right, the last ten. Uh, the line, the front line, Jamie Ben, Tyler Sagan, and Alex, uh, Alexander Radoff. Uh, Radoff got two goals, eight assists. Uh, Sagan got five goals, five assists, and Jamie Ben got three goals. And the last ten, the top line for the Predators, uh, Cal Youngcroft has six assists and two goals. Uh, Ryan Johansson has four goals and uh, four assists. And Victor Arvidsson has three goals, three assists since coming back a week ago. All right, well, the second line, we have uh, Andrew uh, Cogliano, uh, Radic Fasca, and Blake Kamu. Uh, Kamu got one goal, one assist. 
Uh, Pasca has two goals, zero assists, and Cagliano. Cagliano, two goals, two assists. In their last ten. Um, Who do you guys got? Who the Predators have? Last Bill ten? Forsberg has three goals, five assists. Uh, Matt Duchesne has one goal, five assists. And uh, Mikhail Granlin has two goals and an assist. Uh, what does, uh, what's their total for the whole year coming into this game? Also, their third line, which is their top scoring line. Oh, wait, the Predators' third line is their top scoring line? Yes. Is that top scoring in the last 10 or all year? In the last 10. All right, let's see here. All right, so you have uh, Rocco Grimaldi with three goals, one assist. Uh, you have Kyle Turris with five assists, and Craig Smith with five goals, three assists. All right, we have Dennis, uh, what is that, uh, Gurianov? G-U-R-I-N-O-F. Gurianov, yeah. He has uh, five goals and one assist. Then we have Jason Dickinson, one goal, two assists, and Corey Perry, four assists. Oh. All right, let's get into the defense before this website makes me chuck the computer. Why? Because it keeps saying it's failing. Whoa. Yeah, no, there's too many stupid advertisement crap on the site. Alright, uh, Jamie, uh, what is that, Oleksiak? Yeah. He has a one goal and assist. Miro Heskinen, he has a four assist. Who's your first defensive? Alright, so my first pairing is Roman Yossi with seven goals, seven assists, and Ryan Ellis, two goals, six assists. All right, second uh, line for defense, uh, John Klingberg in his last 10, he has six assists. And then uh, Issa Lindell, or Asa Lindell, he has three assists. And their third line is garbage as far as their defense goes. But this is solely in their last 10. But if you want to, like, stack it up like what they did all year, yeah. I'm not kind of in the mood to get that deep into it because I do still got to talk about the goalies. So, um, for the. Yeah, for that's, the Predators, that's what we have to look forward to. Uh, actually, I was going to say for the Predators, uh, also their second line has uh, Matias Ekholm with five assists and one goal. And then you have uh, Dante Fabro with no points. Yeah, uh, Saturday, December 14th was the last time the Predators and Stars played. Dallas won 4 1. And that's all I can add. You could take out the uh, take on the goal, you know. All right, so goaltending is uh, Ben Bishop is their starter. 27 games played, uh, 13 wins, 9 losses, 3 overtime losses with a .925 save percentage. Uh, one shutout and a 2.34 goals against average. Then you have Anton Hudobin playing uh, 15 games this year with eight wins, five losses, one overtime loss, no shutouts with a .928 save percentage and a 2.31 goals against average. He also has two assists. Wait, goalie has an assist? He has two. Whoa. So yeah, that's pretty much our preview of the Winter Classic. It uh, starts at 12 o'clock Central Time, 12 o'clock p.m. Central Time on Wednesday, January 3rd. Yep. Uh, so something to look forward to for all of us. Uh, it's something we've asked for for a while. We wanted it in Nashville, but yeah, no. Yeah, the NHL, they uh, worship the original six and... 